This contrast between inductivism and deductivism seems to me strongly influenced by Karl Popper. Right. So my question is... Influenced by what? By Karl Popper. Karl Popper? Yes, oh. the philosopher Karl Popper. And so my question is... <laughs> Is, has there been any influence by Popper on your work? No. <laughs> Popper was just describing what's common sense science since the 17th century. In fact, I would question your first statement. Uh, it's true that I've been involved in a methodological critique since the late 40s, but it's a methodological critique of non-science. Non-science starts with just uh, collecting data and trying to make inductive generalizations from it, and it gets absolutely nowhere. You, know, you just can't do it. It's been understood, in fact, one of the parts of the uh, modern scientific revolution, you know, so-called Galilean revolution, is you don't even try that. Uh, you search, they, that's why scientists do experiments. Uh, in fact, in Galileo's case, kind of thought experiments. Like he didn't drop two balls off the top of the Tower of Pisa. That would never have worked. He just had a very elegant argument, thought argument, that explained why um, a rate of fall wasn't going to affect, uh, be affected by mass. Sometimes he may have done experiments, a lot of them didn't. But the point is, ever since the 17th century, in fact, even before, scientists inquire of the world. They don't just observe it. They inquire of the world. That's called experiments. They concoct situations that might give you some insight. And from them, they make some guesses about what the theories might be, and then they try other experiments to test the theories. And ultimately, they get sort of back to phenomena, but they really don't care very much if they get back to the phenomena. Because, in fact, the phenomena themselves are so complex and so involve so many variables that you just don't try to approximate phenomena. Uh, take the examples that I mentioned. Uh, bee scientists don't try to approximate bees swarming. It's just too complicated. The wind's blowing, you know, one of them changed his mind, whatever. Uh, and f uh, physicists certainly don't, uh, you know, take a look at what's going on outside the window and try to draw inductive generalizations from it. I mean, you go back far enough and maybe in, you know, pre-classical Greece, maybe science looked like that. But this is just mythology. It doesn't happen. And it couldn't happen. Scientists are inquiring, they're in inquiring about nature. And the same is true in linguistics. If you're a field worker, so you're working, you know, some unstudied language in the Amazon, I mean, if, if all you can do is take recordings, okay, you take recordings, but you're not going to find much. If you're really doing serious field work, you use the techniques that you learned in your field methods course in college. Namely, you try to figure out the kinds of questions that will elicit data that might be significant and relevant. You just take a look at masses of data, you basically get nothing. It's just noise. You know? So I don't, it's true that it's a methodological critique, but it's a methodological critique of something that dominates in the human sciences, but has absolutely nothing to do with science. That's true of uh, the whole behaviorist tradition. I mean, the idea, or of what was called behavioral science, the 1950s, all the human sciences were called behavioral science. I mean, that makes about as much sense as calling physics meter reading science. I mean, it's true that, you know, take Eddington and others, you can regard physics as in principle just the study of meter readings. But it's not meter reading science. You're using the meter re readings to try and discover something about the world. Well, behavior is just data. Not all the data, incidentally, just some of the data. And selected parts of that data, if you aren't smart enough to figure out which ones, it may tell you something about the human capacities and uh, um, the nature of the mind. But uh, just to collect data and uh, you know, uh, organize it somehow is, is going to get you nowhere. Um, if you can't think of anything else to do, you have no ideas, then maybe you do that. But uh, 
it's not the way science is done.